Welcome to the Be More podcast. I hope you have not all missed me too much. We did no episode last week, but we are back with an absolute fire of an episode today. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Over to the Be More podcast episode. Not sure what it is, but I know you're enjoying it. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and um, share this on your Instagram story and tag us in it. And um, yeah, enjoy. Okay, welcome to the Be More podcast. We are back after a week off, and today I'm excited to be joined by our guest today on the show, Phil Hopkinson. How are you, sir? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? Good, mate. I'm excited to have you on. Same here. Very, very excited. Thanks for asking me. You've been um, listening to the podcast, that podcast, haven't you? So you've been getting some value from it. So I thought, right, let's get you on. Absolutely, yeah. I, um, I tuned in a couple of weeks ago. I've listened to four or five of them now. Um, I kind of, yeah, just listen to an in-between audio as while I'm taking the dog for a walk and stuff. And yeah, really useful. So appreciate it. Nice. So you're into your personal development. So we'll definitely touch on that. Um, yeah. So mate, without further ado, let's crack on with your story. And uh, yeah, let's get stuck into it. Okay. Um, so born and bred in Nottingham. Um, I am 30 years old now. So I was born in 1988. Um Mum and dad got divorced when I was like six, seven years old. Um, and then just normal childhood, went through school, played a lot of football, played a lot of sports. Um, I loved athletics. I loved football. Um, and till probably the age of about 15, 16, went on trial at Leicester City football. That's all my life was sort of teenage, your early teenage was just football. Like I'm going to be a professional footballer, uh, like a lot of kids dream. And um, got Oshkud Schlatter in both my knees. So I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's kind of where your muscles and your bones grow at different speeds. Um, so you end up with like a bit of a lump on your knee and it's really painful. So uh, I had it in one knee and then got it in the other. Doctors and physios and that says you need to rest it. You've got to put ice on it. You've got to rice, et cetera. Um, and went quite a few weeks and months in pain just trying to play through it because I just didn't know anything else. I just wanted to play football. Um, got worse, ended up having an operation on, on my right knee because the lump got that big. So they just literally shaved the bone off. Um, and that's whilst I was on trial at Leicester. And then once I got back from that recovered, Leicester just wanted nothing to do with me. Um, literally couldn't, couldn't even get in touch with them. So they just kind of, it was just a big no. Um, and that for me hit me really hard. I was like, what am I going to do now? So I think I was just turning 16, 15, 16. Um, so that hit my confidence quite a bit when I was that age. Went to college after school. Didn't really, had no idea what I wanted to do. At school, the last sort of year or two, year 10, year 11, started hanging around like the wrong sort of crowd. Thought I was cool, trying to impress the girls and all that sort of stuff. And just started hanging around with the wrong people. I wasn't playing football because I was recovering from my injury. Um, and just grades, I got enough grades to get on a course of BTEC, National Diploma in Sport, Fitness at college and that's what a lot of my mates were doing so that's just what I did I didn't really think this is what I want to do I just thought my mates are doing it I like sport I'll go to college um, did that for two years in the second year of college I was lucky enough to do something called balls to poverty which is where you travel to South Africa and we help kids in townships and we take we took hundreds of footballs over we coached we did clinics in like townships um built football pitches um went to like the trans sky region which the closest hospital was like four hour drive so it's literally like you're in the middle of nowhere in mud huts and we built them football pitches uh, we helped paint decorate schools all that sort of stuff it was really cool um we had a week where we stayed in cape town and we entered their under 18s like football tournament so their gift to us for going to their country and helping all these kids they let us enter the, the national under 18s football tournament. So we played against teams like um, Orlando Pirates, Kaiser Chiefs, all their under 18s. They were, they were way better than us because we were a college team. So we didn't really get very far. I think we got to the quarterfinals in the second year we went and we played two games in one day. That's just how it worked. And it was like 30 degrees and we were dead. Uh, I think we ended up losing like 4-3 or something like that. But that was an amazing experience. Um, but yeah, for that week, whilst we played in the tournament, we stayed like in five-star hotel. 
And the reason being our coach, Joe Sargeson, who works for the FA now, um, he's big into personal development. That He says, I want these kids to experience what it's like to live the highs of like a five-star hotel. And then straight after that, we went to the Transcar region, lived in mud huts for a week. He's like, I want you to go from that high down to that low just to experience different types of life basically and it was it was incredible like I learned so much from that trip I actually went twice as a student and then three years later they asked me back as like a coach um, to go and help the students so that was incredible um, that taught me a lot and then the reason I tell that story is because after doing two years at college I still had no idea what I wanted to do um, I was playing semi-pro football wasn't good enough to be a professional so I thought the next best thing might be coaching. So I got into a bit of football coaching. I decided to do one more year at college, literally because we got to go to South Africa again for Balls of Poverty. That's the only reason I stayed at college for one more year. And the course that most of my friends were doing was personal training, fitness instructing and personal training. It's a one-year course, cost about 800 quid to do it. Thankfully, my, my mum uh, gave me a chunk of money towards that to do it, um, which I'll be grateful for forever. And for that last year, I did my PT course. And ever since, that's what I've gone into. After that year, um, went into working at a gym part-time as a fitness instructor. I actually worked on reception for a few months whilst I was doing my course because I got free membership at a local health club. I had to work two and a half hours a week at like six in the morning to half eight. I absolutely hated it. Um, but that got me free membership at a gym, so I did it. Um, and then after I finished my course, became a fitness instructor. Um, became a PT I thought great I'm a PT like charge 35 quid an hour if I do 10 sessions a week that's 350 quid a week like that's decent money um, didn't realize it don't really work like that you have to build a client base you have to build relationships and when you're 18 brand new there's a lot of people probably don't believe in you yet because you are brand new. Like if they want advice or they're paying good money, they're gonna to go to someone who's a bit older or someone that's done it for 10 years rather than you. So it took a while to build a good client base up. Um, wasn't making enough money. I was making six pounds an hour as a gym instructor, about 20 hours a week. The cleaner, my mate who's a cleaner made more money than me per hour. And I was a qualified gym instructor. That's how bad it was. Um, so I got a job at Trent University coaching ladies football. I'd done my level two um, and I got a job uh, I did my UEFA B license which I, I really loved doing because I, I still thought at the time football coaching is, is my career now I'm not going to be a pro the next best thing is to be a coach and so I did my UEFA B license did my youth mods knew a few people because my brother played for Nottingham Forest at the time and I managed to get a job at Nottingham Forest as a coach um, I coached in the tens under 11s there and that was an amazing job but again the money was terrible like it um, the reason I did it is because I really enjoyed it but looking forwards I thought right football coaching isn't going to make me the money I need to do what I want or to grow so I got another football coaching job at Man United soccer schools so I started working there that was only in the summer but they paid pretty well so it was only for two three four weeks at a time um, it was an amazing job, great experience, but again, it was just part time. So I was, I was gym instructing, working at Trent Uni coaching ladies, Forest under 10s, 11s, Man United soccer schools. And then after about three, four years uh, at, at the health club, my best mate at the time, Max, who worked there, came back from a holiday in Marbella, says, Phil, you need to look at this. And I was like, what? And he was like, I've met this guy, Dan, and he showed me a picture of him, just the ripped blonde dude eight pack look like action man um he's like i've met this guy dan he's he's um in a business he's a millionaire i was like okay and he's like I've, I've joined as a member in this in this business that is in herbalife nutrition and i'd never heard of it um i just i've i thank myself now because i was quite open-minded i'd never heard of it he told me how it sort of works and says you know what i'm still not making enough money i've got five jobs like i'll try it like so <laughs> I started using the products and anyone might relate. I'm naturally like an ectomorph. So I'm quite slim, quite skinny. If you imagine uh, Mo Farah, he's, he's a classic ectomorph. If I didn't go to the gym and eat loads of calories, that's what I'd look like. I'd be that skinny. That's, and a lot of people that are like overweight, trying to lose weight, hate people like me. But I hate people that put on muscle really quickly because I can't do it. Um, so I tried so many different products. 
whey proteins, creatine, everything people at the gym were using. And I just couldn't put on weight. And it's because I had no idea about good nutrition. Um, I did a PT course for a year and the nutrition section was that short that I qualified as a PT. I knew how to do perfect technique of like uh, clean and press and, and pull ups, like pull downs, deadlifts, all that sort of stuff. But when it came to diet, I didn't really know what to advise them on. Um, and I just, if someone was balking, I'd just say, eat as much as you can. And if someone was trying to lose weight, I'd just be like, well, we need to get in a calorie deficit and pretend I knew what I was on about, but I didn't. Um, and I almost felt like I was cheating my clients because I didn't know what to tell them. So I started Herbalife and the first thing I noticed straight away was the, the shakes, which I used after the, my workouts, because that's what I thought you did with them, because I didn't know how to use them. I used Formula One after my workouts just as a recovery. I love the flavor and it just worked better for me, if you know what I mean. Some of the whey proteins actually made me go toilet more than I used to. So I actually ended up losing weight because my body wasn't used to that amount of protein. It was probably bad quality protein that I used to lose weight and get bloated and, and stuff with stomach problems trying to take these supplements to gain weight. And with Herbalife, after a couple of weeks, I noticed that wasn't happening. And I was like, these products are actually really good. Um, so I started recommending them to some of my clients, people that I knew, and they started using them as well. After a month or two, uh, my mate Max just stopped doing it. He thought, yeah, I don't know what he thought, to be honest, but he just didn't really get it. So he dropped out the business. And then after three, four, five months, I can't remember how, how long it was, Dan, who Max had met, rang me and said, I'm coming up to a meeting in Derby. Um, I know Max isn't doing it anymore, but I'd love to meet you and show you how it works. So I went to a meeting in Derby, um, which is about half hour from where I live, met Dan, showed me how it works. Um, and that's when I kind of started to get it. And I thought I could actually grow something like a, like a, a second income alongside my other jobs. But actually looking at this could surpass what I'm making right now in the gym. And if I could do that, I could actually quit the gym and maybe go self-employed or drop one of my coaching jobs. And that was that's what I wanted to do. Um, so fast forward maybe a year or so, I made it to a level called supervisor in Herbalife. So my money was OK, probably only about four or five hundred quid a month on top of everything else. Um, and I got married. I got married to Emma, my wife. Um, we went on holiday, not holiday, um, our honeymoon, we went to Mexico and I read a book called Beach Money by Jordan Adler and Danny recommended this book to me for ages and I just never read it. I never read, I never read anything. Um, I got put off reading at school. They made you read books you didn't want to read like Mice and Ben, um, Holes, stuff like that, um, Shakespeare. I think the last book I read was Stephen Gerrard's autobiography because I'm a Liverpool fan. Um, and I didn't even finish that because I got bored halfway through. So he recommended his beach money. So I read it and I actually couldn't believe what I read from it and how I'm missing a trick, basically. And I said to Emma while we were away, this is something we could do. She's a nurse. So at the time on our honeymoon, she was working eight, 70, 80 hours a week as a nurse in A&E. That was her dream job. She went to university four years, qualified as a nurse, worked on a ward went to work in A&E and she loved it for the first few weeks and months but gradually the shifts the night shifts just the general like hours was killing her her nutrition was poor her sleep was poor everything and I had five jobs and I was 25 she was 24 we we're in Mexico next to this swimming pool I just said to her when we get home I'm gonna do Herbalife like let's just do it we've got nothing to lose out of all my jobs that's the only job I'm the boss Health club tells me what to do. Forest tell me what to do. Man U tell me what to do. Uni tell me what to do. Herbalife, I kind of can do what I want. So let's just run with it. And she fully backed me. She's like, yeah. Originally, she was skeptical when I started it. She didn't want to try anything. But gradually, she started seeing me getting better results. So she started nicking my protein bars. She started using, uh, she doesn't like milkshakes. So she started nicking my vanilla and making like smoothies with it. And she really liked it. And now she uses more products than me. She loves it. And she's in incredible shape as well um but anyway going back to that yeah we went hard with Herbalife and within a year or so I was earning pretty much what I was earning doing PT so I dropped one of my football coaching jobs my forest job because even though I love coaching you got paid 20 pounds for doing a training session which was an hour and a half plus a half an hour setup half an hour valuation at the end so I don't know what that works out 20 quid divided by three 
eight, seven pounds, less than seven pounds an hour. Um, and you got 30 quid on a match day, which could be a six hour drive um, there and back. So that was probably about two pounds an hour. So it's just like out of all my jobs, which is the worst paid and which is draining me the most that. So I'm going to drop that. So drop that. Um, it's making more money for the next few months. And I managed to drop uh, my job at Man United. And then eventually to cut a long story short, quit my job as a gym instructor and PT at the health club where they were taking massive percentage and chunks of what you do every month. That's how it works. Um, I'm grateful to the health club I was at because that got me a, a really good client base. I met so many people, learned a lot more uh, in terms of how to be a good PT because doing your course is great, but you don't learn much until you actually experience it yourself and get in there, meet people and train with people. So I loved it, but managed to drop that um, went self-employed as a PT um, and my wife Emma now has managed to go part-time as a nurse she works at a GP practice she does 20 hours a week compared to 80 that she used to do I do about 10 hours a week now as a PT which I love because I got to a point where I didn't like doing PT I was doing maybe 30 40 sessions a week and the quality of my sessions wasn't great because I was tired my nutrition was bad I was overworked and I just kind of, I was getting people through the sessions without really giving them a focus and why we're doing this particular exercise stuff. I was just almost making it up because I got to a point where I just couldn't do it properly and I hated it because I felt like I was doing them a disservice. So now I'm doing average 10 a week and I love it because I know every client, I know all their goals. They're on a great plan. Their nutrition is better. A lot of them use Herbalife. Some of them don't. You don't have to use it. Um, but a lot of them do because they've got busy lives and it's convenient for them and they get great results from using it. Um, we run a boot camp now, two sessions a week. We've got 122 people sign up on our last boot camp, which is crazy. The first ever fit club we did, we got three people, my mum, a receptionist at my health club and one of my PT clients. We had three people and then we showed a picture last year, um, of one of the boot camps. We had over a hundred people at a boot camp. So that was about two years on. So it just shows if you don't stop doing something, you can grow momentum. And that, that's grown amazing now. And a bit like I've, I've listened to Jordan Headstore on this and I can relate to him big time. There's only so many people you can help doing a job like PT. Um, and I found that her black network marketing in general, you just help so many more people on a bigger scale. And that's, that's kind of my purpose. And I've realized now I was never meant to be a footballer or a football coach. Like this is kind of what I I believe as Pons Plants is just to help people improve their health, be happier. That's a big one. Like so many people now that I meet, which I, I love is they message me like, thanks so much for like being so positive and helping me. Like you've inspired me. And that's what I love getting feedback from clients and people that I know is that I've just, even if it's just something like stop them from drinking as much alcohol, going for a run once a week, whatever it is, it's improved their life. That's what I know when I sort of mission and what I was put on this, on this planet to do. It wasn't to be a football coach training under 10s. Um, if people do that and love it, amazing, but it wasn't right for me. Um, so yeah, fast forward now to where we're at. Um, we were in Herbalife for five years before we got to the level we're at now called Active World Team. Um, and like I say, it's made me go part-time, Emma's part-time. We've just bought a new house because of the income that we've uh, gained over the last sort of three years. Um, and we're renovating a house right now, which never would have been possible five years ago, working five jobs and Emma working in A&E. Uh, we've got a dog, a puppy beagle. I've always wanted a beagle. Watched a, a film called Shiloh when I was a kid. And then um, I think it was Fox and Hound. And uh, I was like, I want a beagle. But because we were working like mad, we just couldn't have a dog. It wouldn't have been fair. But now we work from home uh, pretty much four or five days a week. Uh, we've got a dog and he loves life because we take him on three walks a day. I take him on walks every morning, every evening, put the AirPods in, listen to an audio, listen to a podcast. And our life is just, if you could have told us five years ago, this is what our life would be like now, we would have snapped your hands off. Like we would not have believed you. And I put it down to network marketing and, and her black nutrition. That's changed both our lives like massively. So proper grateful, proper grateful.
Mate, so I yeah, that's goosebumps. the whole time through that story. I got <laughs> through that was awesome. Um, so you heard nothing about it before because obviously most people in the fitness industry are a little bit skeptical about Herbalife or they, they know somebody say something about it, but you had no idea at all about it before. Yeah, nothing. Um, no one in my gym had ever mentioned it. I hadn't seen anyone wearing it. I'd seen Beckham wearing it on his LA Galaxy top, but yeah. never really made the connection. I just thought it was maybe an American product or company or something. Um, and so, then when I, did, when I did see it online, I kind of then made the connection. But yeah, yeah, I'd never heard of it, never tried it before. Interesting. So as a personal trainer, at the height of your PT business, how yeah. many people were you helping? Um, clients probably got up to around 40 clients probably just over at one point yeah so i was doing on average between 30 and 40 sessions a week okay Um, and they were doing like one session a week some were doing one some were doing two some were doing three um i kind of said to me you need to do at least once a week so see me four times a month um and then in between i'll give you things to do yourself so that they were getting benefit and not just seeing me and then doing nothing in between but yeah so probably around 40 ish people per month i was helping and how many people are you impacting now, indirectly? So, we, so we've got about 200, just over 200 people in our team. Most of them are probably helping at least two, three, four, five people each. So, so it's probably around a thousand people. Crazy. Yeah, it's it's mad. Madness. So, to go from that, like, I, and I know that most personal trainers, their goal, they got an industry to help people, right? Yeah. I know some get into it because they hear the, the chunky hourly rate and they're like, yeah, I'll, I fancy a bit of that. And then they're the ones yeah. who leave within a few months because they realize it isn't, like you said, as easy as, as, easy as that. Yeah. Um, but most personal trainers, they want to help more people. Yeah. How many P- have you got many PTs in your team out of interest? Uh, I had one who quit after about six months because he just didn't understand it. Um, but to be fair, he joined earlier when I didn't really understand it. So that's probably part down to me not knowing. Yeah. to teach him like now if i had someone sign up i'd know how to um get them started how to activate them how to give them kind of what i've learned and that would sure, probably sure. benefit them more but right now pts um zero none it's crazy right <laughs> it's because Mad. it's crazy so i'm um, like obviously we're mass massive now in the company and we, we want to we know this is the vehicle to help more people with our nutrition yeah. mission and with helping people live a healthier active lifestyle yeah. Um, you'd, I know it isn't a business just for PTs. Obviously, it's a business for anybody, which is the, the beauty of it, right? Um, but yeah, what, what do you think we need to do as a company, maybe, to make personal trainers? Like, I don't want to go on about this for too long, but it's just super interesting for me. Yeah. Um, because we've had a few PTs on now who have told their story. And we, our stories are all really quite similar, like sporting background, football, college. Yeah didn't know what he wanted to do, fell into the gym because that's what we enjoyed doing. Both ectomorphs, both used the products and was like, Jesus, this stuff's better than protein powders. Because I was the same, protein powders used to make me feel like, yeah. feel horrible, right? And I'd be stuck on a toilet, always be bloated. I'd be like, this surely isn't what this is supposed to be doing. But yeah. I was willing to do whatever it took to get a result. Like whatever yeah. it took, and I'd, I'd spend whatever I needed to spend. I would do whatever just to get a result. And, and everyone's the same, right? Um, Yet yeah, you mentioned... Herbalife Nutrition, they're like, oh, that stuff's got lead in it or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. They have some kind of opinion on it. And I'm just like, but you'd pick up a protein powder from any other company with this, that's a lesser quality protein or a supplement. It's just an yeah. interesting one, isn't it? So what would you say is a way of tackling that maybe? I think uh, the, the more recent times, like the last year or two, it's got a lot better. When we joined five years ago, I heard it all. It's a pyramid scheme. It's it's uh, got this and that in it. It's my girlfriend's dad used it and his brother got diabetes or whatever. Like you've heard everything like, and it's just nonsense. Um, but it's, it's people that have heard from someone, from someone, from someone. It's like Chinese whispers. Um, and I think back five years ago, it was more looked at like compared to things like Slimming World and Weight Watchers and Juice Plus and things that are more, I don't know much about things like Juice Plus, but things that were more like it's a shake diet, it's to lose weight. And obviously your first thought as a PT is, no, you should be eating real food and yeah, don't yeah. rely on, on a shake. Um, but then once you, like the last two years has been amazing because how many awards has Herb Life won? 
like mm. in men's health magazine, fitness magazines, women's running magazines, like everything. And people now are starting to realize it's getting a lot more current. People are realizing it's a nutrition brand. It isn't a shake diet thing. Um, and I love the word functional food. We're, we're big on now saying Herbath Nutrition is just functional food. It's fast food for smart people. Like what do you have for breakfast? Oh, a bowl of cereal that is just full of sugar. It's got no protein in it, this and that. If I could give you something that would give you everything your body needs and it takes even quicker to make and taste amazing, would you fancy trying it? That's what herb, I feel it's just functional food. It's, it's quick and simple and fills the gaps. If you, if you haven't got time to have a healthy lunch, it's there. If you haven't got time to have a healthy breakfast, it's there. After your workouts, what are you using? Why don't you try this? You might feel better from it. I did. It's just so easy then to share it because it's functional and people are understanding now it, it isn't a shake thing. It's, it's just convenient, healthy calories. Um, and way more than that as well, obviously, but yeah, how to tackle it. I think just keep sharing our message. Like we're on Instagram every day. It's people are, are seeing it more and more and more and getting curious about, it. we've had so many people just watch what we do. We're haters or we're naysayers and gradually have come to the idea that this might help me. Like, or people you bump into that, oh, you're still doing that herb life stuff. And it's been like four years since you last spoke to me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. How's it going? Brilliant, mate. Love it. Oh, you're still taking it. Like, I thought it was a diet thing. You're like, no, mate, I've been using it five years. Like, it's just food. <laughs> um, Is this so, year your first vacation? Yeah. So this will be our first vacation this year. Can't wait. Um, so, yeah. Awesome, isn't it? Caribbean, uh, sorry, not Caribbean, Greek cruise, five star. Um, we were that close to getting to Miami last year, um, and we just missed it. But yeah, can't can't just wait. Just out of interest, did the health club you used to work for pay for you to go on holiday? <laughs> uh, no, mate. Um, I've actually saved a picture of what that health club gave me as as a thank you. I worked there for nine years, and pretty much all I got from them. Yeah, you'd go out for like a Christmas dinner and stuff like that, but that most companies do that. Um, so when I left, they gave me a £30 voucher for DW and I bought a £60 pair of night trainers. So they basically bought me one trainer um, as a thank you for working Cheers. there for nine years. Yeah. <laughs> and you um, were on the last diamond experience, weren't you? Yeah, we qualified for the diamond crazy, experience. Wow. The, the recognition from the company. I've only been involved a year and I've got more stuff. It's mental. It's absolutely it's, crazy. It's one of them as well that you see it, but you don't believe it. And then we turned up to this country home in January at kickoff for this diamond experience. And you're like, oh, what's this going to be like? And um, you turn up and there's a butler there, like takes all your bags, takes them to your room. You go to your room. It's, it's huge, massive bathroom, massive bedroom. You've got like gifts on your bed and there's no lock on the door because it is a guest house. You're like, you're like, where's the lock? And they're like, there isn't a lock um all you know, oh, right and it's but because you know the sort of people that are going to be there like positive happy everyone's there to like congratulate you like it's just such a different life and it's something you don't really experience or think like say it's like make believe until it actually happens and you meet these types of people and that's what we've just loved over the last few years the, the people that we've met so positive and just influence you so much definitely so it's like a personal development company right so were yeah. you, you obviously you wasn't into that before you didn't read books so you were the same as me like i had a bad reading experience from school as well like i just thought it was boring and yeah. I, I kind of the, the mindset of once i was finished university i'm done learning now like i went through a course at uni and spent five grand a year or whatever and didn't even pick up a single book i just yeah. copied and pasted from references that i needed to get to get my dissertation done but now i find myself reading almost a book a week and it's just crazy like the the, the journey you go on and how the company kind of support it as well. They're always constantly saying that develop yourself as a person so you can bring more value to other people and obviously live a more fulfilled life. Is that not many companies have that kind of, um, that, well, they don't do that for their, for their, the people who work no. for the company. Right. And we don't even work for them. That's the beauty of it as well. We've got our own independent business and anything is possible, which I think is the exciting thing for exactly. people like ourselves who are hungry who want to have a better life but haven't really got the vehicle to do it and you had five jobs at one point trying to trying to figure out how to do it but then you're earning more on your one opportunity now than you were in five jobs which is crazy right it's mad 
Imagine. and then um, the future anything is possible so like what books would you say have given you the most value to for, for people who are listening whether they're like listening for, for the because they're interested so, maybe involved or because they're actually already a member you know what um i knew you were going to ask me something about books so i've written a list because in the last few years I've, I've read and listened to so many books like and i forget sometimes which ones and that's something i picked up from you um that i'm gonna go back to books and it's not just the case of reading 100 books it's actually reading it and taking stuff from it and using it rather than just being like yeah i read that book it was great wasn't it like mm. no all right what did you learn from it and that's where with some of them i'd probably go back and be like i'm not sure actually like i need to go back and read it um so obviously the first one that i read mainly was beach money by jordan adler he joined, I think, was it 11 network marketing companies before he found the one that worked for him. Um, and now he's a multi, multi-millionaire. Um, so yeah, his story was amazing to hear as well. And the fact he didn't have any team members for the first so many years is so good to hear as well because you get new members and they're like, I can't find any members or customers and that. And you're like, don't worry about it. Like, read this book. Um, but yeah, Beach Money, The Five Second Rule, Mel Robbins, absolutely Love amazing. That, that's changed my life, like literally, like I would make excuses. I would snooze my alarm every morning and maybe snooze three, four, five times. And then you go back into that sleep and then you wake up feeling terrible. Um, so that's changed my life. Now you get up and you just make it happen. Um, the Secret by Rhonda Byrne was a very interesting book for me. The audio is a bit weird. I'll be honest. It's kind of got like weird sounds and that in the background but the messages and the, the things that taught me was crazy and I just used to go out some days and I'm like all right let's see if the secret works right on this walk with Buddy there's going to be a black uh I don't know Jaguar going to drive past us and stuff like that just to start to think like is it real like and sometimes things like that would happen and it'd be like I go to where I park where I go to the bank and normally my mindset belief, there's, there's going to be no parking spaces. Like I'm going to have to park miles away. And I started to, to go to the bank and just think, I'm going to find a parking space. It's either going to be that one, that one, or that one. It's quite close. And I started getting parking places. And it's not magic, right? But it's just the way you look at things. And it's like the glass half full or half empty. Like if you start being more positive, thinking things are going to happen for you, things are going to work for you things happen for a reason like they do and you just start seeing the positive in things rather than negative um and i used to love moaning i look back at tweets and facebook statuses from like six seven eight nine years ago and i just cringe like how was i that negative or that kind of immature um and yeah so the secret taught me a lot about just being more positive and attracting more positive people to your life as well so I recommend that. Um, and then one that I would definitely recommend is called Be Obsessed or Be Average by Grant Cardone. I don't, have you read that one or not? I've not read that, but I like, I like Grant Cardone's stuff. So Yeah, so um, I went to Malta with Emma about two years ago and I got that audio just because I'd seen someone else had it. And it's a picture of him like riding a, a private jet. Like, I have read that. I have yeah. Read that. Yeah, that's a really good book. Um, that, and, that, was, that was interesting for me because... I was taught that being obsessed was a weird thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think bloody, like people say, bloody hell, you're obsessed. Yeah, and straight away you that think that's a like that's a negative thing. And the diet and stuff where I used to do competitions or football, people used to think I was obsessed, and I'd be like, maybe I do need to be a bit more balanced. And it used to make me yeah. feel that way. Whereas you that used to doubt me, yourself. Like, nah, being obsessed is the best because that's how you get to where you want to be. And I was like, yes, Grant. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he just he flips your mind the totally other way around to what you've been brought up to think. We're like yeah be yeah, yeah be obsessed like get haters like people who do well in life have haters and have naysayers like it's gonna happen use them as fuel to do even better like originally when i started herb life as well i know a lot of people relate you get negativity people don't know what it is so they bad mouth it because it's different and it's the same with anything in life and that would have used to turn me off a bit and would have thought oh like i would have been a bit soft like maybe it's not for me maybe they're right and then hearing that, it's just like, he loves having haters. When social media first came out, he used to post like 20, 30 times a day. And social media experts would say, you're posting too much. Don't do what Grant Cardone does. He's obsessed. And he's like, how do you know? Like when social media just first came out, he's like, how are you an expert? It's not been around long enough to be an expert. 
Mm. Like, but their haters and naysayers trying to tell people what to do or what not to do. And he's just like, screw them. I'm going overboard. And he says, when we got complaints saying we're posting too much, we started posting twice as much. <laughs> and even though like, yeah, everything works different for everyone. Um, but it's just hearing his side of it compared to what you're used to just opens your mind up to even more. I'm mm -hmm. thinking, why not be obsessed with that? Why can't I make that happen? Why shouldn't I be able to do that? Like, and it just makes you kind of believe in yourself so much more. So yeah, Grant Cardone is, is a great guy to listen to. He's a bit extreme, but sometimes you need extreme. <laughs> sometimes you need that. Yeah. Like he's just an American shouting at you. If you're driving, I love Grant Cardone when you're in the car. Yeah. He's awesome. Definitely. I see, um, I don't know if you follow Fit Couple, but I see they were at his 10X experience recently. Oh, that's yeah. That's, that's on my goals board to go to one of his. Yeah, I know our sponsor, Dan, went to see him in Vegas, I think, last year. And he had a picture just right at the back. Took a picture on, on stage. I was like, I need to go and see Grant live. So, yeah, that's definitely going to happen. Love it. So, should we add some more questions here, mate? How has yeah. failure set you up for later success? Um, how has failure set me up for later success? I think a little bit like what I just touched on. It's like when I used to fail, I used to treat it like I had failed and that was it. Like I didn't learn things from failing. Whereas now if say, for example, we started our fit club, free fit club, who wants to come went mad promoting it. we got three people turn up. One of them was my mum. One was a receptionist, one was my PC client. And we had about 20, 30 say they were going to come. And like, I could have either after that been like, shit, this don't work or let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. And that's kind of the mindset now is if you fail, take something from it. Like you never fail if you learn something from it. And that's what we're doing now. Like since doing this business for the last five years, we've had so many different flows. If you want to call it a flow, this is how, this is what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Like we've changed it so much, but we've worked, we've learned little bits from each one. Um, and now like I use that experience to teach our new guys. And we've just had a guy recently join up who's 18. He's a fitness instructor from down south. Never met him before. He met us on, on Instagram. And I said, how old are you? And he said, 18. And I was like, boy, if I was 18 again, like I, I wish I found this opportunity sooner because I wouldn't be where I am right now. But everything happens for a reason. But I just basically said to him, look, if you help, let me help you. I'll teach you a few bits that I've taken. I think you'll find it useful. And that's now, I just offer people advice. Um, whether they take it or not is up to them. But I just know there's so many people out there now that I could probably relate to and help them out in some way. Um, whether they're ready for it or not is up to them. But I just love now giving people the opportunity or inviting them to something um, and showing them and not being too bothered if they say no or say uh, it's not for me or you're weird or whatever um just take it on the chin like no problem you're not ready you don't tell them they're not ready you just know in your head if they said no that's absolutely fine they're just not ready um and you just move on and keep helping other people when the student is ready the teacher will appear absolutely well, i was actually about to ask you as well it's quite funny what advice would you give to your 18 year old self and what, <laughs> what should they ignore um so let's, let's imagine you're sat in Starbucks. I don't know if you ever work in Starbucks, but you can work from wherever now. You do what you want. But let's say you're sat in Starbucks <laughs> and your 18-year-old self walks in with his yeah. knee in bits. <laughs> what would yeah, you say literally. To I think one of, one of the biggest things is don't take yourself too seriously. I think when I was back at 18, 19, like, you took yourself very seriously. If someone had a go at you, you'd get very, like, like self-defensive um, and you'd worry about what people think of you all the time. And... That for me over the last few years, it's been quite a hard transition actually, like worrying about the way you look, the way you speak, the way you come across. Am I annoying people? Um, do people want to see this on my Facebook and stuff? Worrying about everyone else's opinion and whether you fit in. And now I just, I do what feels right. And whether people like it or not, I'm not bothered. It's like people follow you. If they don't want to follow you, they can unfollow you. If people want to be your friend in real life, not on, online, then they'll be your friend and they'll want to be around you. If they don't, they don't. Like, I'm not worried now about what other people think so much. And I think if I had that mentality back then, I'd probably be an even better person now. Um, 
but yeah going back to that age I don't know just yeah don't don't think you're going to be a pro footballer because it's not going to happen uh, it's like one one percent out of so We're many about being positive here come on <laughs> yeah I know I know but um if you could like slip a book maybe into his backpack where he had to read it what would it be yeah um probably like the five second rule or the secret just something about being more positive but actually having more of an open mind not just thinking this is what I'm going to do with my life and if I don't like it's over like just something that's going to open your mind up a lot more and give you more opportunities rather than just setting your sights on one thing and that's it even if it's right or wrong how old were you when you started implementing goals or started to like set goals for yourself um probably not even as teen probably like early 20s mid 20s because i'm 30 now um seriously probably about three four years ago I started making like a dream board um because i heard other people do it and read books that people do it so started just putting things on the board that me and emma would want in our life or want to try and get to and the best part about doing that is ticking it off like we when you've got a board or a list like ticking them off is such an amazing feeling yeah um and if you don't question for you go on then jordan spoke about this a lot and i've just thought about it now because you said you misses alignment yeah you two are like power couples together right and you work, <laughs> yeah. work really well together. But yeah. I know some couples that aren't the same and almost hold their other person back. Or it might, right. not be their, it might not be a couple, it might be their parents or it might be their best mate. Like someone's there holding them back. Whereas you two obviously are like going really well together, going full asset together or aligned yeah. and have the same goals. You've got your vision boards together. You're working through it together. I don't know if you like review it together. You set goals together, like all this stuff, right? Whenever you yeah, go, yeah. and they're like, I know it's whenever I'm with Robin, all we talk about is our goals. All we talk about yeah. is what we want to do. All we talk about is where we're at. So, I mean, it's always like alignment. Yeah. Not every couple is like that, though, are they? It fascinates me. Oh, definitely. Like, yeah, so many couples we know. Um, normally, it's actually, no, I was going to say it's normally the slightly older generation, but actually, there's people our age or younger that they're very, like you say, different. And yeah, so when I started, doing the herbal life stuff Emma was a bit skeptical she didn't she didn't know what it was her diet wasn't good she thought we already had enough on our plate why take something else on um so I just stuck with it and I think that's the biggest thing with most people is your other half or your mum or whoever it is if they don't quite understand what you're doing the the natural reaction is negative or try and belittle it because it's different to what you're doing and we're afraid of change um so naturally as a human you you kind of try and get rid of it almost but i think if some if you're really passionate about something whatever it is and you're of a half or someone in your family is not that passionate or not as as positive but you know it's right just keep doing it and the yeah. more you do it they're they're gonna watch because they're not just gonna get rid of you out of their life they're gonna watch and they'll get to a point where they realize actually it's working for them or maybe maybe that is good or maybe what they're doing is what they should be doing and then they start from being naysayers they become supporters and then eventually they probably become like lovers of what you're doing yeah like um, she does. but here's a question because you said you're passionate yeah. about it but if you were yeah. brand new to it what made you passionate was it how you felt on the products or was you inspired by spilsy or what was it bit of both bit of both i think because i met spilsy and and he earned more money than anyone else in my life that i've ever known and actually he was a really nice guy and he's, he's messaging me quite a bit i thought i want to be around this guy like even if this doesn't work for me he's a really good guy to know and then yeah the products like i started feeling better i had more energy stopped taking the old stuff i took so my gut was better um and actually i, I mentioned to him because she struggled with a lot of bloating ibs problems and I, I said to her like this could actually help you um and so it's it was me actually caring about people as well like close to me in my life me caring for them and knowing that i've got something that could help them that belief in my head was probably strong enough for me just to say, you know what, I'm doing it no matter what. And if you want to do it as well, brilliant, because I know it's going to help you. Um, but if not, no worries, I'm going to keep doing it anyway. And I think that's you the got, attitude you, that you need. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. You, I think if whatever your product is, whether it be met, like Herbalife or any other network marketing company or any kind of business where you're working with, right, you've got to believe in the product. Absolutely. And obviously yeah. your, your belief in the product is bulletproof. And it's, it's, 
here's a question because I've only been involved a year. You're five years in now. Yeah. People say it's like it compounds how good you feel using the products. Like, because I, I feel the best I've ever felt, and I've noticed that I'm feeling better the more I'm using it. So I'm like, this is yeah. crazy. So within five years, am I just going to be like like Iron Man? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you're gonna be you're gonna be an action man, um, <laughs> running Ironmans for fun. Um, no, it's 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 just it's good nutrition in it. It's if you if you could have a perfectly balanced diet with all the macros and micros in and the energy product and whatever it is, if you could get that in every single day, you're gonna feel better. You're gonna look better and everything. But it's just not realistic to be eating so many avocados a week and all this spinach a week and getting all your protein in and A, people can't afford it and B, it's so time consuming. I see people packing up all their lunch boxes doing a, a prep or whatever it is. Um, I did a show actually a year and a half ago. I did a body competition just because I thought I look quite good now. I'm in good shape. I've always wanted to do something like that. So I entered a body competition and it got to six weeks before the competition and I hadn't really prepped and people I spoke to like, you need to do at least 12 weeks prep. You need to do like 16 weeks prep. And I was like, to be fair, like I feel quite good cause just cause I use the products every day and eat well, train four or five times a week, nothing over the top. And I thought, okay, well I've got six weeks. If I can just go a little bit harder, maybe with my training, cut out a little bit more sugar, like the chocolate and stuff I have at weekends. Um, I could do this. So I was like, screw it. I'm going to do it. And I just did it. Um, still use the products through my whole like prep. And even in, you do something called a lean week, peak week, sorry. What did you compete where, in men's physique? Uh, it, was, it was pure elite, pure elite. Oh, and nice. it was uh, a beach body physique. Cause if, Let me see if I'm I can not... scroll through and find it. <laughs> um, yeah, look out for the fake tan. Um, Mate, it's yeah, I did that. Man. Did that and... Um, I was at the event, spoke to a lot of the other people that were taking part, talking to them about what they'd eaten, their prep and stuff. There was no one that had done like less than 12 weeks prep. And I was there thinking, damn, am I going to embarrass myself? Like, I know I'm in quite good shape. I could be a bit better, but I'm in pretty good shape. And I was like, you almost compare yourself to other people there. And you're like, I'm better than him. He's probably a bit better than me. I'm better than him. Um, and yeah, I came second in it. I played damn. second. Mate, I've seen my... your picks. Look at them blue shorts. Oh, wow. Don't. Mate, you look um, mean, and that wasn't even trying. Not really. I didn't, you know what, six weeks I signed up. I didn't actually start doing properly, maybe till four weeks before it. Um, and yeah, that's, for me, that's just credit to the products. It's just putting everything I need in my body every day anyway. And then if you do go a little bit more hardcore, I've like that's what, you can, as well now, mate. that's what you can get out, yeah? I love it. Um, I see the ticks now. Yes. Yeah, Maybe we'll get some more ticks on these pins. Yeah, that's. I think that's quite an old picture now because we're we're living with my with Emma's parents at the minute because we we just bought a new house we're renovating. So as soon as we're in a new house, we've got a massive new board to get all the goals on. Oh, yeah, okay, get, yeah, you do need to. The, have you got the rangey? What's that? Sorry, is there a picture of a white rangey? Oh no, but funny story. Emma's parents bought a Range Rover and Emma's sister bought a Range Rover. So we've scrapped that now. We want to get a better car. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So I'm giving you a proper um, Instagram raid here. Start with why Simon Sinek, what a book. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I forgot to mention that one, actually. Instagram, yeah, Sam, Phil Sam underscore Sinek. Hoppo. Guys, check it out. Great content. Great guy. Absolutely ripped to bits. <laughs> I like the blue shorts, mate. Good from you. Oh, mate. You know what? That was, I got them two days before the event because... I guarantee no one else on that comp was using Herbalife either. No, they weren't. Because I remember my last competition, I think, I was, I was backstage speaking to people and they were always getting tanned up. But the weirdest thing ever, isn't it? When everyone's getting tanned up, no oh. one's happy. Everyone's so miserable that they've, been, they've starved themselves for about four years. Literally. <laughs> and I remember asking the guy, I was like, what have you eaten for this prep? He was like, only three things. I was like, what? He was like, well, I had steak only in the steak. evening. Yeah. I had boiled eggs and tuna. I was like, is that all you've eaten for the last 12 weeks? He was like, yeah. And occasionally I'd have spinach with it. And I'd be like, wow. <laughs> Calm <laughs> down a bit. He didn't even place. He didn't even place. And I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> And that's the thing, like, I feel like, like it is important people like us share about it because people don't know, like that's all they know. 
And obviously yeah. they've gone to people that have done comps before and says, how do you prep? What do you do? And that's all they know. Yeah. And it's like, like times are changing. Like the science behind products and supplements, like people need to supplement now unless they are eating like an absolute machine. And even so, if you are, you need to supplement. The food industry isn't what it would yeah. be, right? And I remember, because I met a guy who I used to train for a coffee about a month ago, right? And I trained him for a good few years. And he remember he, he was on the bench press once and he went to me, Jack, what do you think of Herbaloid? This is about four years ago. Right. And I went, because he'd just been to a HOM with Kev. Okay, yeah. So he was buzzing. Kev's now my upline, for those of you who are listening. And I went to him, don't do that. You don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> And um, obviously now I'm Mr. Herbalife and he's come to meet me and, he's like, and I'm there in the Herbalife tracksuit and he's laughing at me. Going, you remember when you told me not to use that? And I was like, yeah, my thought process was because a Herbalife smoothie for breakfast is like 200 calories, right? I was like, yeah. white protein shake is 100. Yeah. So why wouldn't you just have that? And then I was, now I understand it. Yeah. The, what you're getting in that, in that 200 calories, you can't get in anything else. You can't get it in yeah. food. So then it gives you what your body needs. So then you, the rest of your calories that you're going to have in your day is this going to be filling the gaps, right? Because you've already got what you need in regards to all your micros, which is the most important thing. Exactly. And I, I would hit my macros spot on for 12 weeks for a competition or whatever and feel awful, absolutely yeah. awful. Whereas now I don't track anything, but I know I'm getting my micros. I look better than I did when I competed. Yeah, same. It's like... All year. And it's like, I used to have to diet so hard to do that. And if yeah. the missus wants to have, like, we'll often eat naughty, right? Whereas yeah. if I was on a comp, I'd be like, no, I can't oh, yeah, yeah. off diet. And if we were going out after that, I'd have to have my bag with me with all my six Tupperware meals in there. Yeah. And this is how I used to live my life. And I used to remember people used to be like, you're obsessed. I'm like, yeah, but I've got to be to get to where I want to be. Whereas now, yeah. I just go out the door. I don't even think about my nutrition because I know that it's all under control. I haven't got my shakes with me, but I'm not, I don't need it. You know what I mean? Like, I just know now. I've got full confidence. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even really think about it. That's the amazing yeah. thing with it. Crazy. That's why I love I love the the, the word functional food because that's yeah. what it is. It's 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 just yeah. It's it's hard to kind of sometimes put it into words when people don't know what it is or have never used it before because you get so excited and like they you don't want to like <laughs> yeah you don't want to like vomit all this stuff on them and then they're like put off. It's like you have to break down like actually how simple it is, how nice it tastes, how people get great results. And it's not a shake diet thing. And pe once people kind of understand that and try it, they kind of realize, yeah, this is good actually. Just yeah. like you were that guy. And just when I was still at the health club, all the other PTs told me not to do it. Um, and I just thought we, one of them was about 50 years old. Mm. He makes less money than me and I'm 25. Like, why am I going to take advice from you? No offense, but I don't want to be in your situation in 25 years. Yeah. Um, and that's, yeah, taking advice off people that actually do the do. Or so if you're interested in something, it's like one of the best is I think it's from Beach Money or one book was like, if you're going to buy a Range Rover from a Range Rover garage, but he drives a Volvo, mm -hmm. why are you going to believe him that Range Rovers are that good? Like he yeah. doesn't even drive one. Yeah. And for me, that, that clicked big time. I was like, if I want to learn about how to make more money, I need to talk to people that make more money. Like, stop taking advice off even sometimes it's hard people that that you love people in your family that maybe aren't doing very well they try and they've got your best um what do you call it at heart but sometimes heart, their yeah. advice their advice isn't great and you kind of just have to limit what you take in from them and then go and find mentors or other people that inspire you that are actually doing what you want or using what you want to use for example and i think that's one of the beauties as well of one of personal development and two of network marketing is because you get an upline that's doing the do right. There's yeah. someone there, no matter how many levels up for you, it's obviously your first, like your sponsor now. He's the biggest distributor in the UK, right? So, like, yeah, that's your mentor. How good's that? And, like, for me, very similar, right? Kev's obviously one of the top guys in the UK. Yeah. Like, and I'm fortunate enough to have one of my only personal training clients now that I've got left because I just don't do it anymore mainly because yeah. I feel like I lost integrity doing it. But one of my clients now, he's like one of my main mentors. He's not actually in the company. He's got his own business, but like he's just done in his own way. But like for me, the mentors you get from, I think it's from personal development. Like you said, you attract it into your life, right? 
and then Massively. everything happens for a reason you end up in a certain place so for like for me a lot of people have said to me that your growth has been crazy in the last year in in her life i'm like it hasn't been in the year though it's been yeah. in the years leading up to it and now yeah. i've found the vehicle so i'm ready to go and i've just gone hard it, absolutely like man. i think you're you're, you're killing it but Honestly, it's not mate, come like, from her, but like it's come from. It's obviously Herbalife's helped me massively. Yeah, it's everything else, and everything comes at the right time. I think you find Herbalife, or you find the right vehicle for you, wherever it might be, yeah. at the right time. Definitely. Cause I might have found it a few years before, and I would have been rubbish. I wouldn't have even got senior consultant. <laughs> yeah, because you wouldn't have been at the right point. It wouldn't have been at the right point for me. Whereas now, yeah. and I, I, I believe that again, I'll find the right people at the right time yeah. for them as well. Because I, I might think, oh, this guy's going to be great. Yeah, and he doesn't end up doing anything, and then I'm like, that's really weird. But yeah, it's, it's not. You don't get frustrated. You just get fascinated, and that's the exactly. beauty of it. Is it because all the time you're going to continue doing it, like you say, your friends are saying to you, you're still using that diet product, and you're like, yeah, still going. But you're, yeah. you're going to build more credibility through time. So any yeah. advice, like to anybody who's looking to get involved, or maybe is a, currently a member, is just to be stay in the race. Absolutely. Stay never, in the race and continue never quit. to grow as a person. Yeah, never quit. You're only going to be providing your body with the best nutrition you possibly can. Keep exactly. getting better. Keep getting better. Keep getting better. Listen to the podcast. Listen to the audios. Read the books. Go to the meetings. Get around the fire. Be around the, the people who are doing the do. And you're only going to naturally be pulled in that direction. Well, I think people Absolutely. are in the mindset of they quit too quick. They, 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 oh, yeah. And, and they'll surround themselves with the wrong people, which is why I asked you earlier about your missus and how you two go together, which is amazing. Yeah. Whereas if you know people what? get around the wrong people, they can be pulled towards the other direction as well and then get pulled away, you know? Hugely. Like, I'm, I'm a big believer in the Jim Rohn saying you are, you are basically made from the five, six people you hang around with most. You are basically, you're taking a bit of each of their lives and you gradually become a bit of them. Um, so if they're negative, they hate their job, they're overweight, they drink alcohol every weekend. Like you become a bit of that. And for me as well, um, we had a we had a training with Quinton Rivoire on Sunday, uh -huh. who's he's going to be. Well, Dan said it. He's he's going to be the youngest ever chairman's club or founder circle. He is an absolute machine. But when you look back five six years ago, he wasn't. And it's like you say, it's just over the last few years he's grown. He was a rugby player. Um, got into Herbalife. Went to Australia to play rugby came back to France and he just he loved rugby that was his passion and he says I was passionate about rugby I was passionate about partying and he says that was my life my job through the week just led to weekends rugby and party Sunday I'd wake up late hungover have a nice meal and then dread going to work on a Monday and he said that all I've changed over the last few years is my passion I'm now passionate about helping people and growth and traveling and he's just changed what he's passionate about and for me, that clicked a bit with me because I quit football a year and a half ago. I was still playing semi-pro, quite a good level. And I just thought for me to grow and for me and Emma to get to where we want, I need to cut this bit out. Even though it's going to hurt at first because football is my life. Ever since I was five years old, it's not getting me anywhere. And it's getting me around the wrong type of people as well. People that hate their jobs, drink at weekends, go out Saturday night, spend all their money. That was who I was hanging around with. And now I'm not, and I'm hanging around with more people like yourself, Dan, Quinton. There's so many people in the team who just, have, they inspire me. That's making me a better person. It's actually mm -hmm. made mine and Emma's relationship stronger as well over the last 100%. few years. Yeah, I bet. Because um, of the personal development and the people we hang around with. I've made some of our best friends as well. Were you at Summer Spectacular last year? Yes. I'm glad you did mentioned you, that. Did you hear Style Bell uh, mention yeah. Eliminate Distractions? Yes. For me, it was the first time I'd ever heard it. And I think I was a qualified producer. Right. At some respect last year. Yeah. And I was just like, these guys are cool. Style Bell and Quinton Revoir. They was like, these Mate. guys are really cool. Because Kev was my mentor, right? But I couldn't relate to him because he's a bit older than me. Scottish. Yeah. Family. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Person. Whereas these two lads were like young, hungry. And I was like, ah. And they were like, yeah. eliminate distractions. So I was like, right, okay, I'm going to do that. Like, eliminated all the things in my life that I thought could be holding me back and then just yeah. went tunnel vision and all of a sudden start, things started to happen and this year I'm like even eliminating even more things to try and nail down on where I want to go yeah and that, that's I think that the reason behind a lot of the growth is just I've just cut the crap 
yeah definitely which most people aren't willing to do they want the result but they're not willing to sacrifice the things to get to where they want to be and people yeah. are like oh that but they think it's easy like it's not yeah. it's simple but you have to be willing to do it like and, and do yeah. the do and show up and like you said the five second well, i've read that book over christmas and like, i was snoozing my alarms right, yeah. right now bang out, up, up morning routine you're, get it you're up at 5 a.m aren't you I'm a, I'm a member of the 5am club mate since i read that book i've not missed it once that's amazing that's on my list of one of the next books to read oh mate books, the best have you read any robin sharma books before or not i've read um the monk who sold his ferrari wow what a book that's yeah that's the only one i've read from robin sharma but i really enjoyed it so, so add to your list um the one i just put on instagram yesterday the leader who had no title that one in 5am club mate game changers the way he the way he like writes his books it's like a story i just find it really like i just get captured yeah. in it and it's all yeah. about what we're talking about now it's been around around the right people personal yeah. development focus on yourself be healthy feed, feed yourself with the right foods but do you know what i mean like give your body and your chance everything every chance you've got to be successful and i think it's just yeah crazy Definitely. I, I would you never know, be, be on a call like this talking to people in this way a year ago so people can't relate don't worry, you will, you will relate. You just got to get in the game. Yeah, definitely. And start to grow. And then all of a sudden, this thing, these things will start to make more sense. Um, yeah, what was I going to say? Yeah, Summer Spectacular with Style Bell was, that was the meeting that, which changed mine and Emma's business as well. And I think like you say, just because he's, he is relatable, but he's not like he's American, he's extreme about everything. Like he goes running up the Hollywood sign every morning doing fit clubs. He goes and feeds the homeless people every week. And obviously we don't do things like that. But some of the things he said like that, like limit, limit your association with certain people and um, discipline your disappointments and things like that. Um, it's like limit your association with people for me is I'm still friends with most of my old football friends. I just don't see them every week. Mm. Like you limit that time you spend with them because you know, if you did go and spend time with certain people all the time, you would become gradually what they're like. And you just like people in your family, you can't choose your family. You love your family. Some of them are crazy. Some of them are daft, whatever, but you just, you love them and you just limit the time you actually with them because you know, if you are with them too long, that's going to influence you too much. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's, Style Bell is amazing. Since last summer, spectacular. Our business has grown more in the last, how long is that? Less than a year, eight, nine, ten months. Our business has grown more since that meeting than it had for the three and a half, four years before that meeting. Like it's, it's just gone crazy. Um, so if anyone's listening that is in a network marketing business, go to the meetings because mm -hmm. meetings is where the magic happens. And that was Eric Worre's biggest message in GoPro that I read. And he said he went to a couple of meetings and he, he was watching all the people at the front who made loads of money and he didn't really believe that they made that much money. And he asked one of them, what's the, what's the secret? And they said, there is no secret. But one of my best tips for you is come to the next meeting, he says, and then come to the next meeting. And he says, if you get everyone in this auditorium to put their hands up, is this your first meeting? Most people will be at the back and say who's been before and then gradually it'll be at the front who was here 10 years ago and it'll be the people at the front and he says that's your secret don't quit stay in the game and attend the meetings because there will be meetings that change your life um and for me and emma it was summer spectacular last year definitely yeah and then bring people to the meeting and get them in the room to see it with you yes that's the biggest change to ads our business we would attend but we just couldn't get anyone to come with us and now we just Spills says to us, he built his whole business on invites. That's all it is. You invite someone to something, they're going to say yes, maybe, or no. If it's no, no problem. You're not ready. If it's a maybe, try and get them to come, but don't nag, don't annoy them. If they say yes, amazing. And they're the people you focus on now. They're the gold ships. They're the ones you focus on now. Um, and yeah, we're getting people, to, getting people to meetings and everything you see like you leave an event or a call buzzing like people will leave this maybe buzzing but then you're trying to get that energy through to your other guys and people on your team or people that you know because they haven't seen it or heard it or been there they don't understand it they only understand it if they're there and so yeah. invites for quick me question about experience. meetings yeah because we spoke a lot about perseverance i think that's relevant for the meetings i remember the first meeting i went to it wasn't a big one it was like a little one and i was thinking that i was sat at the back and i remember i was hungover 
Yeah. And I was thinking, this is so weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. People getting like this recognition. Everyone was super happy. There was like really loud, corny music. Like Tina Turner was on at the beginning. I was like, I don't need this. I'm like, I was thinking, I'd rather be watching the football or whatever. But <laughs> but now the meetings for me are like the highlight of my month or like yeah. the big meetings are the highlight of my year. Like yeah. this completely shifted in how I feel. Like the idea of being on a, a Herbalife holiday yeah. would have been for me before I got involved would have been like, weird yeah a bunch of shake drinking people on a holiday like <laughs> i know they, they, they've rented out the whole cruise ship haven't they for our cruise so yeah they go to town like, yeah on the cruise so i'd be like that would just be weird like they'd probably be drinking smoothies the whole time they wouldn't eat anything and the, whereas in, in reality it's like everyone just gets like proper parties has a great time and like you said it's around positive people like for me yeah. i can't wait for that week like i'm so yeah. excited whereas before i'd be like nah if i saw that on someone's story I'd be like that'd be weird yeah on instagram exactly. right? you know, that'd be me on the story like you want to be here <laughs> oh, yes in my poll <laughs> crazy right? it's crazy the first crazy. the first uh vacation we saw was a cruise it was the adriatic or adriatic however you pronounce it around like, italy and croatia and all that and we both looked at it like oh my god how much do you wish we were on that boat and so now it's it's kind of just i think it's happening for a reason our first vacation was a cruise um, and yeah, it's, I've seen pictures like that. They put like the whole cruise ship is Herbalife. Like there's Herbalife on the bottom of the pool. There's Herbalife on the windows. Like it's again, you can't explain it to someone that's never seen it before, been on yeah. one. And obviously, we haven't been on one, so we don't even really know yet. No, nah, but I'll tell you what we need to do. We need to get a crew of the lads together, all the ripped lads, and get an unbelievable picture for the ground to be like, yeah, this stuff's got lead in it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't jump off, you'll sink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Call it you, mate. Well, it's been great to have you on. Yeah, remind us of your Instagram tags for people to go and check you out, mate. Uh, yeah, it's Phil underscore Hoppo. And then me and Emma have got one together called Knots Fit Couple. So N O T T S Fit Couple. Um, and that one's actually grown more than my personal one now. So I think they I like her more. Ago, yeah. They like her more than me, yeah. So yeah, I think your missus is I winning that one, mate. I don't mind that. <laughs> quality right well it's been a good time you on mate and um thanks for sharing your story and i'm sure we'll do a second one maybe yeah towards extravaganza when we're up there getting our get team recognition mate yes mate 100 percent. nice yeah. one thanks for having me really Legend. appreciate it cheers mate take cheers, care buddy. take Bye, care mate. see ya